Discussing uh, methods to solve nonlinear equations. Right? So, that is solutions to nonlinear equations in one dimension. That is what we have been discussing. So, just briefly go over the methods uh, which we discussed in the last class and uh, also uh, some of the implementation of these methods in the form of programs. That is what we will be looking at today. So, you remember that uh, such numerical solutions are necessary uh, because you cannot always get uh, closed form solutions to nonlinear equations uh, just as in the case of a quadratic equation. So, numerical methods to solve them are absolutely required and we said that there are uh, four different methods to solve to or achieve this goal and they are basically gra graphical methods, methods of successive bisection, Newton Raphson method and iterative method, iterative method, Newton Raphson's iterative method and secant method. In fact, all these methods are iterative except the graphical method in which you could simply plot a function and then look at the zeros or where do they cross the x axis. In the case of one dimensional function which we are discussing here, this is rather useful to get a rough estimate. And then we looked at method of successive bisection and, uh, and this bisection methods which we looked at basically the, the fixed point uh, iterations and then we also looked at the, the mean value. Okay, so, we looked at the two, two methods of doing this and that is what the, the implementation of that we will see in a, in a few minutes. Okay. So, in the, in the bisection method uh, actually there are two, uh, one is bisection method, so two iterative methods and that one is bisection method which we looked at in which we just said that uh, we choose or we make two guesses. Uh, that is x0 and x1 as uh, the 0 of the function or the, where the function crosses the x axis to be. And we will choose x0 and x1 such that it is on either side of the root right. And uh, we then take the mean of this as the new iteration point okay and then look at the function value at this point and if the function value at this point is negative then we replace x0 by this point and the function value at this point that is f of x2 is positive then we will replace x1 by that point and that is what we saw. So, we have because we have chosen x0 and x1 such that f of x0 is less than 0 and f of x1 is greater than 0. That is if you actually go and uh, look at some function of this form. So, let us say we look at a function of this form that is 1 minus uh, x squared uh, minus plus log 10 of 1 plus x. Okay, so, we had uh, a function some function of this form we will just plot it from 0 to uh, 2 
and then we will plot a zero axis on that. Okay, so that's that's a, that's a, so now that's the x axis, right? So that is a zero line. So we want to get this point where this function crosses this axis, right? So that's what we want to get. So you basically want to get this point where this function crosses this axis, okay? And then it turns out that uh, uh, the one way to do that is to use this bisection method. So we will make a guess of where this is, this cross, this crossing point is, and that is taken as x0 and x1. So we are choose it such that x0 is on the side where the function is negative and x1 is on the side where the function is positive. So we have to choose, make our initial guesses on either side of this crossing point. And that's the drawback of this, or of this particular method that we need to have an idea of where the function, the zero of the function is and then we have to choose uh, it's on either the, our uh, initial guesses to be on either side of this this point okay. so let's let's just look at an implementation of this code first okay and then we will go and then look at other methods okay so here is a code which would uh, it's a midpoint or bisection method okay so here is a code which does that. So what I have done here is to write the code in such a way that there are two function calls okay, in this uh, code okay, so that this midpoint is our method. So midpoint method has been put into a function. So the main program here uh, simply makes, takes an initial guess. It asks you to feed in two initial guesses and you have to feed in this initial guesses x0 and x1 such that f of x0 is negative and f of x1 is positive. That is, it is on either side of the desired root. So if there are many roots in this program, this, is, this program assumes there is only one root. If there are many roots, we have to make this many, many calls depending upon how many roots the function has. So we need to have an idea about how many roots a function has before you make a call like this, a program like this. Okay, so we this scan of function will, as you know, we have seen it before, just reads of x0 and x1, okay, from the screen, and then it feeds that into this function called midpoint, okay, which has been defined, which which returns the solution. So since this midpoint function returns a solution, uh, we need to define that we have to find what variable type it returns and it returns a floating point and hence I have defined here declared this midpoint to be a float variable. Okay. And now, now this midpoint function which finds a zero using this bisection method or the midpoint method and that function need to know what is the function for which it is to find the root. Right? So that is a user defined function. So that has been passed, that is written in another function called FUNC here. And uh, this program need to know what that is. So you note this here. So I have called, so I am passing this variable here. So there is FUNC is declared here, okay, as uh, external, okay, this is declared external. This is some this is again a float, that is also a variable type, we will see why it is so. So this is a function, this returns the function value at any point. Okay. So FUNC basically has my function which whose zero or whose solution I need to find, whose zero I need to find. So that is supplied in another, another function, okay, that is called FUNC and then FUNC is that, that a pointer to that function is passed to the midpoint. So this main program itself does not call this FUNC. It is called by this function called midpoint. So that's the idea. Okay. So, so it needs to know what that function is and that has been passed here. Okay. okay, so now when this midpoint function takes it, it takes it as function. Okay, so you could give any name here, but it takes it as function and then it calls that uh, function program. Okay. 
So that is the that is the idea. So let us look at the structure again. So we have two functions here one is midpoint that is a method okay. Now this is going to be a general structure for one or two programs we look at that we have a function called f, now one, fun, one function which tells you the solution to the or the 0 of your equation and that could be midpoint method or fixed point iteration method or it could be Newton Raphson or it could be secant method any method which you are going to look at okay. For different methods there will be different functions. So this main program simply calls one of those functions here passing the initial guesses okay and a pointer to a function which contains my f f of x which for which I need to find a 0. So this is just a pointing passing pointer to that thing. So we have seen this in the initial part the programming part that how to pass a pointer to a function to another function okay that is what this is. So I am just passing a pointer to that function here. So now here is a midpoint function and again I told you that this is supposed to return a floating point variable so I typed it typecasted it as float and similarly this midpoint is supposed to return the floating point variable which is a 0 so again I declare it as floating point okay. So then the, this is the uh, main thing this is very simple we know that all you need to do is to this function all you need to do is to take x2 as x1 plus x0 by 2. So that is our method right. So we have initial guesses x0 and x1 which is passed on to this and this okay now this pointer to this function the one which gives you the function value. Now this program here you could give any name it does not matter right and you just call okay, this is just a pointer which is passed on to this okay. So here you could give any name so that is the idea if you have a package if you are writing a package to find the roots of the equation then you could give it any name here the user need not know that what your name you are given okay, you just have to the user has to define a fun, a some subroutine called f u whatever in this case I call f u n c and pass a pointer to that okay. So then this function returns a float and it takes an argument which is float okay. so that is what it is and then what I have derived some error to the my error estimate here start with I just initialize it to 1 and then I say that you do this loop till this error is some user defined tolerance which I given as 0 0.0001 10 power of minus 4. So this error is defined as if you remember is the initial guess minus the new guess divided by the new guess the absolute value of that that is the error that we have declared here. For example, it could be x0 minus x2 by x2 or x1 minus x2 by x2. Depending upon after the first iteration, we are going to replace x0 or x1 by x2. So x0 and x1 are our initial guesses, and we come here and we compute x2 as the mean, the midpoint between x0 and x1, or x0 and x1. And then I compute the function value. Now I, I look in the function. I'm calling this function here, fun f of x, function of x2. The function of x2. When I call, you look at the function of x2. The function is, when I say function here, it actually calls f u n c because function is a pointer to f u n c. So it calls f u n c with an argument float x. So that's a very value x value at which you want to evaluate the function, and the function is evaluated at that point. That's so 1 minus x square plus log to the base 10 of 1 plus x. So that's our function. The function which we just now saw. That is 1 minus x square plus log to the base 10 of 1 plus x. So it just computes the function value at that point and it returns it. That's what it's doing. Okay. So this function. So whenever whenever you call function from this program, from this subroutine called midpoint. And it's actually com com uh, calling f u n c because we have passed a pointer to this function f u n c as uh, to this program. Okay, so it computes that. So we, we determine the new x two value as the midpoint between x zero and x one. It computes the function value at that point. It evaluates it and it looks at whether it is less than zero. If it is less than zero, then the x zero is replaced by x two because f of x0 is negative so if 
x f of x2 is negative then x0 is replaced by x2 and so the error would be x0 minus x2 by x2 on the other hand if f a function f of x2 is greater than 0 then we will replace x1 by x2 because f of x1 was positive so we will replace now x1 by x2 the new x1 value will be given by x2 and the error is x1 minus x2 by x2 okay so at each of the iteration step okay i print out the error the new x2 value and the function value at x2 and then once it once it satisfies this error condition that error is now less than or equal to 0 0.00001 okay it returns that x2 value and comes out of this program and it goes here okay and that's our answer and the zero and the, the, the main program will let's print it out the zero of the function is uh, function as whatever it gets as s here so that's the idea okay so let's see that how this works so we will just uh, compile this and then compute it I will call it midpoint dot C minus L M because I am using log 10 it needs a math library. So we will run this, this program now so that as uh, we will say dot slash a dot out okay so now the program is now waiting for uh, two inputs so let us uh, go back and see so it is waiting for this function here at this variables x0 and x1 and remember f of x0 is negative and f of x1 is positive okay so that's what we we need to give okay so f of x0 is negative and f of x1 is positive because we are going to replace here whenever the function value is negative we are going to replace x0 by that okay and when the function value is positive we are going to replace x1 by that so x0 f of x0 is negative and if you plot this function we have seen that in the earlier case okay so it is where the 0 is around between 1 and 2 and so, so we will give it as 2 and 1 as the initial guesses this 2 f of 2 is negative and 1 is positive okay so that is what the, the output is so that is the iteration step so we have the, the initial uh, iteration is we, okay, we gave the initial values as 1 and 2 and uh, so the initial iteration should be the first step should be 1.15 that is was the initial midpoint rule is and the function value there is negative so we will replace f of x0 by so x0 by 1.5 uh, okay we had x0 as uh, uh, 2 okay so that is going to be replaced by 1.5 and then we evaluate the function there again in the second step and the function value is still negative so we are going to replace now x0 by 1.25 and so and so, and then the next iteration the function value is positive so the function value is positive so we are now going to replace uh, x1 that is 1 by 1.125 so that is that is the way the iteration proceeds and we can see that the error which is in this case it was x2 minus x0 by x2 and in this case x2 minus x1 by x2 is decreasing monotonically so the function value itself is uh, also going towards 0 and then thus we will, will converge pretty fast and monotonically into the value 1.154724 as the 0 of the function okay so that is the midpoint rule implementation. Another method which we looked at that time was fine, method of false position iteration uh, after this we look at the fixed point so this false position iteration uh, we had uh, uh, a slightly different idea to find the 0 that is again we have guesses x0 and x1 such that f of x0 is less than 0 and f of x1 is greater than 0 so that was the same as the bisection or midpoint method we just looked at but we do not here uh, take the mean of x0 and x1 okay. instead what we were trying to do here was to draw a line uh, from x0 f of x0 to x1 f of x1 and find the point at which this crosses the, the 0 axis and then we replace that as our new x1 so that is what we were doing okay so uh, we had uh, we will just look at that uh, the method the false position method uh, the summary of the Magnuson method let us say we have an f of x like this okay then we will pick up two trial points which encloses the root 
right and then evaluate the function f of x0 and f of x1 make sure that they are on either side of the zero okay and then what we did was so now it's like this okay now we have a function like this some function like this and then we just picked up x0 and x1 values okay. that is just some guess okay we made sure that f of x0 is positive in this case, okay f of x0 is positive is on either side of the of the zero uh, in the programs we are taking this as x0 and this as x1 and then we draw a line from this point to this point okay we just draw a line like this we will just draw a line and that line where that line crosses the uh, if you have a line here and that line crosses the x axis at that is somewhere, somewhere here okay so that would be my the next guess okay and now if this value this is my x2 now so my x2 will be this here where it crosses the zero axis and that x2 is now replaces x1 because that is for that x2 value function is here in this case it's negative okay. so that's that's the method which we are we're going to uh, look at now okay. so we'll just look at an implementation of this uh, code here okay. so that is called the false position method so we'll look at the program here false position okay so in the false position method again we have exactly the same structure that's what i said in that thing in the earlier program so we are just going to only thing we are going to do is replace this function which we had called there as a midpoint uh, method okay we are going to just simply replace that by a false another pro, another function called false position okay. and again pass to this program the pointer to our user defined function which is again we take as 1 minus x square plus log to the base 10 or 1 plus x so we'll minimize the same program the same function uh, sorry we will find the zero the same function as what we did in the midpoint method but we'll use a new function called false position okay. so that's what we're going to do so in this in this function again the what we do now that here is again it returns a floating point so it is it's type cast as float here okay and uh, so x0 and x1 it reads off because it also needs two guesses okay both this midpoint and this false position needs two guesses so we'll give that as x0 and x1 on either side we'll again choose f of x0 to be negative and f of x1 to be positive like in the other case now this function here so gets this new x value as uh, now so this is by solving the equation of the line connecting these two points which we just now saw the equation of the line connecting these two points okay with the x axis so we know how to write equation of a line connecting two points and and uh, find where the crossing point of that with y equal to 0 line which is the x axis okay so that gives us this particular formula okay so that gives us this formula for the a new value x2 as x1 plus f of x0 into x0 minus x1 by uh, f of x f of sorry this is actually f of x1 into x0 minus x1 by f of x1 minus f of x0 okay so this is this is our formula okay and in this in this case i had taken f of x1 as positive and f of x0 as negative okay so that's the formula which you put in here okay and then that function value then again if the function value is negative if the function value is negative then we will replace uh, x0 by that and the error is x0 minus x2 by x2 we just saw this in the midpoint no, none of this has been changed if f of x if the function value is positive i'll replace x1 by x2 and and then find the error as uh, x1 minus x2 by x2 x2 and we'll print out here again the error the new x2 value and the function value at x2 so i have not changed the function the function is the same 1 minus x square plus log to base 10 or 1 plus x okay so the idea is that we can use the same we just have to replace this program here and just pass the pointer to that function use a defined function now if i want to minimize some other function i don't have to change anything in this program the only thing i have to change is define a new function instead of this func i would define a new function or i and then pass the pointer to that function to this program okay so we'll see how we could uh, what we get from this okay so we'll now compile that uh, false position so we we compile this uh, program here and now we'll just run this uh, program and again as uh, in the earlier case it's just waiting for uh, 
this uh, two initial guesses x0 and x1, x0 on the negative side and x1 on the positive side of the function. So again I will give the same initial guess as 2 and 1 okay, and then run this and you can see that uh, the method uh, the false position converges pretty fast. So when we ran the uh, midpoint method it had to go through many iterations but here the, the convergence is uh, much faster. Okay. Even though both have linear convergence which we will see soon, uh, this particular method converges much much faster and we of course get the same answer. So again this is monotonic, the, the convergence is, uh, uh, the error decreases monotonically, the function value goes to 0 monotonically and we have the 0 as 1.154694. So that is that's the second method which we saw, we saw this uh, thing and then okay, we look at some other method, so that is uh, the fixed point iteration, okay, so we look at that. So that is something which we again saw in the in the earlier lecture, so this fixed point iteration. So we will just go through that, we will uh, summarize that uh, uh, what we saw in the last lecture once again before we look at the program. So in this method uh, we want to write the function f of x equal to 0 which we have to solve or we have to find the zeros of this function f of x. We want to replace that by a function uh, an equation of this form that is x equal to gx. Basically what it is saying is that I should be able to write f of x as x minus gx and I will say x equal to gx. So this I will use to get my iteration iterative step that is you start with the one guess. Now I need don't need two guesses as we saw one pro problem with uh, having uh, a midpoint or a false position method was that you need to have two initial guesses on either side of the zero, so that is more difficult to do. So we will now be looking at method methods which needs only one guess okay, and it can be on either side of the zero. Okay, so that this is for this fixed point iteration is one such method and where we just make one initial guess and use this form, it is kind of a mapping. Okay, and then we will use this form to generate the new value. Okay. So if x the guess is actually the 0 of the function f of x then x should be equal to g of x right, because now we replace function f of x by g of x minus x. So if x is actual 0 of the function f of x then x should be equal to g of x and iteration would stop. Okay, we will again look at the error as the same one as before that x old minus x new divided by or x i minus x i plus 1 divided by x i plus 1 mod as our criterion for error, crit error okay. So error is defined as that and that, that has to go less than some different value which we define. Okay, so that is the thing which we will again, uh, so that is the method we will implement here and then we will look at that, that code again. So similar structure we will uh, look at this uh, fixed point iteration. So that is this program okay. Again I have not done, not changed anything except changing this function name now to fixed point okay. So I just replace each time I want to replace it by a different method I replace this particular program, this particular function which is my fixed point which is now is fixed point iteration. And there is some, some slight changes, it is like you know, we now need only one uh, initial guess, so we do not need two initial guesses and we have to pass only that and this function, this fixed point, this function will then return the solution to me which I print out here. Okay, so the, again we have to pass the pointer to the function which you want to look at or we want to find the 0 of, okay, that is f u n c, same as before that is 1 minus uh, x square uh, plus log to the base 10 x, but now we need to write that as uh, uh, x minus g of x. So what this function should now return is g of x. Okay, okay so let us, there are some changes, so let us just go through this once again. We have the main program which calls this method fixed point and, and uh, it passes one initial guess and a pointer to a function which returns now g of x not f of x. Okay, so that is the, now then it goes to the fixed point that function. 
Okay. Now this function we initialize the error to be 1 and we demand the error to be the same as 10 to the power less than 10 to the power of minus 4 for this as a criteria to be satisfied. Okay. So now we use x equal to g of x here. So x2 equal to f function x1, x1 is our initial guess. So that is this function is now actually g of x. Okay. So that means I need to write my 1 minus x square plus log 10 of x in the form of x minus g of x okay, and then write g of x. That is what I have done here. So now I have written it as 1 plus log 10 of 1 of x, uh, 1 plus x divided by x. Okay, that is my g of x. We can see that this minus x is my f of x. Right? So this minus x equal to 0 is my old f of x equal to 0 equation. That is this function here 1 plus log to the base 10 or 1 plus x by x minus x equal to 0 is the same as f of x equal to 0. So my g of x is 1 plus log 10 log to the base 10 1 plus x whole divided by x. This is the x divides so this starting from here to here. Okay, so that is that's a, that's a function. Okay, so now uh, we will uh, use this mapping that is x2 is function x1 and uh, now we do not have we just have to replace always the new function. Now, we do not check whether the function is negative or positive before we replace uh, the old value because there is only one guess here. Okay, so the error is simply x1 minus x2 by x2. Right? So that is all we have to do. I will print out the error, the new x2 value and the function value at x2. And then uh, remember that now we call x2 as x1 and I computed the error and then I have to replace x1 by x2 now because next round when I had to go, right, I had to call the new x1. So I had an initial guess, that initial guess is now replaced by x2 here. Okay. So this is the next guess that is written by the function. So that is a fixed point iteration. In short, it is just uh, writing xi plus 1 is equal to g of xi checking whether this the this is actual 0 or not. If it is not and I replace x i this value by this value and continue the iteration. Okay, let us let's run this code again. So like before we will run this code. So now this is fixed. Okay, so now we need to get just one guess. So let us just give it as 1. Okay. So it goes through that and gives us the, the 0. So we need to give one only one guess. I could also give the guess as two or anything. Okay, so it gives me still the same zero. So I'm just doing this iteration. So now remember, this will not work all the time. It worked in this particular case, but we know that it may not work all the time. And as you can see, it is not much faster than the. It is not much faster than the. Well, it is for this function. Uh, it is not much faster than the false position method which we looked at. It had to go through many iterations before it reaches there. But the advantage of course is that we need only one guess and that is a that is a big advantage when it comes to uh, functions for which whose graphical form which we are not able to see or the function itself is returned by some other program. Okay, so we do not know where the 0 is. So we cannot bracket it. Okay, in that particular case this is definitely a great advantage. Just to have to, to just having to guess one point instead of two points. But remember that there is, it has a it has a drawback, and the drawback being uh, that uh, if in the cases where it is uh, uh, the slope is greater than one. Okay, so if it's if a function like this, which has two zeros, uh, let's say so this this particular case it will converge to that. But when it is uh, when it is somewhere here, when it have to find out this point, okay, it will not converge very easily. So remember that uh, what we are doing by this fixed point iteration is actually solving finding the intersection of two lines that is uh, y equal to g of x okay, and y equal to x. Right? That is equal to x equal to g of x. If you find the x in at the intersection point of these two lines that is y equal to x and y equal to g of x. We basically have an equation that x equal to g of x, and that's what we want to solve for, right? Okay. But and we find that when you have intersection points like this, where the slope of this g is greater than one, we saw this in the last lecture, that this will not converge. 
okay, and it'll, it will divert. So this is not guaranteed to give you a solution all the time. Okay, so that's the method. That's the methods which we looked at last time. Okay, and then we briefly saw uh, some other methods. Okay, so we will now go into another method which also again uses uh, only one initial guess, and that is the Newton-Raphson's iterative scheme. So, in the Newton-Raphson uh, iterative scheme. We again make only one guess. Okay, so let's say that's x zero. We took it as. Okay, so what we're going to do here is to uh, actually uh, uh, draw a tangent at this point. Okay, that's the basic idea of Newton-Raphson point. You make one guess and draw a tangent at that point to this line. Okay, so that means uh, we need to find the tangent to this line. That is the derivative of the function at that point. Okay, and you extend the tangent all the way onto the x-axis and find the point at which the tangent meets the x-axis. Okay, so that and then take that as your next guess, that x value as the next guess. That is the function will be somewhere here then, right? And then you draw another tangent, okay, and find where it meets the x-axis, and then you find the function value there and draw another tangent, etc., till you reach the zero. Okay, so that's the, that's the basic essence of the Newton-Raphson method. Okay, so that's again summarized here. So we will determine some. We will first make an initial guess, determine the slope or the tangent of the function at that point x equal to x zero. Let's call that as f prime of x. And then we will get the next root there. Okay, by using this formula, that is, we'll actually finding the point at which that tangent meets the x-axis. Okay. So that's what this equation results from. Okay, so x1 equal to x0 minus f of x0 by f prime of x. Okay. Basically, what we are trying to do is we are expanding the function f of x using a Taylor series and keeping it only up to order one. And then saying that my f of x plus delta x is f of x plus f prime of x, the derivative of x at x into delta x. Okay. And saying that f of x plus delta x is now 0, okay. or we are assuming that. Okay. Or we are solving or finding the intersection of this line, of this tangent line with the x axis. And that will result in a formula x1 equal to x0 minus f by f prime of x. Okay, so that's the uh, general form. So in general, we would write it as xi plus 1. In the iteration scheme, we'll write it as xi plus 1 is given by the previous guess xi minus the function value at xi divided by the derivative of that function at xi. Okay, and that, of course, the as before, the iterative cycle is stopped when xi plus 1 and xi are the same or f of xi vanishes. Right? f of xi goes to 0, then xi plus 1 is equal to xi and that where the iteration will stop. Okay, so now we could see uh, the implementation of this. Okay, so uh, in, the, in, a, in a code, okay, so as I said that uh, the essence of this is that we will say that x f of x i plus 1 is actually f of x i plus h, h is a delta x, the change in x, which is I expand in a Taylor series, right, and then I terminate it here and I say that goes to 0. So, by, uh, my error in this particular case would be of this order, and then I solve for this, that is what I am doing. Okay. So, there are cases again in which this function, uh, this will not work, okay. And uh, we will see that uh, particular case implemented and then the use of that. Okay. So, before we look at the disadvantages of Newton Raphson method, we will just see one case where it is implemented. Okay, so, that is, uh, let's show the program here. So, that is called Newton. Okay, so, here is the, the function. Okay, so again, I use the same structure. I have the main program, which will take in one guess. Now, again, we need one guess here, just like in the fixed point iteration. Okay, and uh, I call this function here. 
I, I pass this, the, I call this function Newton here and pass that my initial guess and a pointer to my function okay, that is to be to whose 0 I need to find. So now what does this program do this Newton this, this part which is uses the Newton Raphson method to find the 0 of the function okay so now it uh, calls the function okay so now this function which is to whose pointer we have got we have passed on to this function as okay now here okay now that has been called here so now we call that function now this uh, well the, unlike the earlier case where the the function was returning uh, just the value of the function now we also need the derivative okay now for the time being you forget these two lines i'll come to this later we are using now a function of the form x minus exponential minus 2 star x we are trying to find the solution of this equation okay that is x minus exponential minus 2 star x equal to 0 so that's what you're trying to find or our function is to the zeros of which we want to find is x minus exponential minus 2 star x okay we will not use 1 minus x square plus log 1 plus x at this point we'll just find the solution we'll just find the zero of a different function here and now I need the derivative of that function so the derivative is given as 1 plus 2 so the derivative of this so that is 1 plus 2 exponential minus 2 star x okay so now this function call is slightly different so let me explain this so this function this uh, the new func which we have in this particular case okay is um, not returning anything okay so it's void okay it doesn't return anything so it's uh, unlike the previous case we have declared it as float because it was returning a floating point number which is a function value so this particular function is not returning anything it takes three arguments okay one floating point thing and two pointers two floating points okay. that's what it takes as argument okay so that is what has been declared here also this is a function this is a function in this point thing calls that name as function and that has three arguments that is float float star and float star okay so that three arguments x1 is what i pass into that function okay and f the function value at x1 and the derivative of the function at x1 it returns through this thing okay that is it, it replaces f by the function value at x1 and it replaces deriv by the derivative of the function f at x1 that's what this thing is doing so you can see that here these are pointers so uh, this are all see this y and deriv are pointers here so that's why star y right the asterisk y equal to x minus exponential minus 2x so it, it gets this x value and and it, it gives this computes this y and deriv at this point okay and replaces this here Okay, then it goes back so when it goes back to this function now it, it when it comes when it makes a call here it comes with the new f value at x1 and derivative value at x1 so i uses that to find the new x2 x x value x1 minus the function value by its derivative okay, note the asterisk f because these are pointers okay so now i have the error as uh, absolute value of x1 minus x2 by x2 and i am just printing that out and i replace this x1 by x2 just like the fixed point iteration scheme so the difference between the fixed point iteration scheme and this is only in this step here that is here the new x2 value is x1 minus star f uh, plus star f divided that is asterisk f because it's a pointer f by derivative of f that's what in short it is and then I computed the, the derivative, uh, the, the new error, okay, and then I print that out, and the, the, uh, the iteration scheme continues till the error is less than 0 0.0001. Right? So we'll we'll run this code and then we'll see. Okay, so again it needs uh, it needs a guess. Okay, so we'll give guess as one. Okay, and that is so now this is a different function. So we, okay, we should, I think we should just plot this function and to see. Okay, so our function was uh, if you remember, uh, so the one which you are trying to solve was uh, x minus exponential of minus two x. Okay, so we'll plot that function. Okay. 
between 0 and 2 let us say we plot it okay. So, the function is like that okay. So, we will draw the 0 axis. So, that is a function which you have uh, we expect the uh, solution to be somewhere less than 0.5 okay that is the x axis. So, somewhere here is the solution which is less than 0.5 okay that is what we are trying to find okay. So, we ran that and we got the solution to be 0 0.042 uh, 0 0.42. And notice that uh, so I am printing out more than uh, one variable here. Okay, so I am printing out here the the error, the new x one, x two value, the old x one value. The, so that's the old guess. This is a new guess. The function value and the derivatives. Okay, so that's what been printed out here. So the function value goes to zero, and the error goes to a value which is less than the tolerance which we had defined in just four steps. So, this is definitely much faster. Okay. This is a really fast way of computing uh, the zeros okay, and the most often used method than anything else okay, because it needs only one guess. Okay. It needs only one guess to be given of the zero and that guess can be anywhere and uh, it converges very fast when it converges. Okay. So, that is the advantage of this is that it converges very fast and it needs only one guess. So, now there are some disadvantages and that is what we want to look at here that it can get into an endless cycle okay, or it can even diverge in cases. So, that is we will look at some pathological cases like this in this program. Okay. So, here is a case where it can actually get into an endless uh, loop. Okay. So, let us say we want to find uh, this we, we our initial guess happened to be here. Okay. We want to go here. Okay. We want to find a 0 which is here. And we do not know the functional form. So, we just made an initial guess which is here. So, what is the method? The method is to draw a tangent and that is what this blue line is showing you. I will draw a tangent and the tangent you can look at it meets the x axis here. right? Okay, when I draw a tangent at this point here and it meets the x axis here and then I take the I take the x value to be that Okay, then I draw a tangent here and that, that meets the x axis here. So, but then it goes back here and it draws its x axis here. So, it keeps jump iterating between these two points. So, we can get into an endless loop in this particular case. See another case happens can happen in which uh, uh, for example, we look at this uh, another another function. So, we look at our old function which we called as which we had 1 minus x square log of 1 plus x. Okay, so, let us look at that function. Okay, so, we look at this. Okay, so, now in this particular case, okay, now if I make an initial guess let us say here okay, and then uh, also I can get into a trouble because if I if I make an initial guess, okay, so now that that is a, a very large value somewhere somewhere very down there. Okay, so, so, the tangent here, the tangent here meets x axis somewhere very much down okay. and then so that's that's one case. So we can actually diverge. Okay. So if you if you for example make a make a guess somewhere close to this. Okay. Then the the value at which you're going to get the where the the tangent is going to meet the x-axis, and that's going to be extremely uh, large number. Okay. And then we can get into an error. Okay. So there are there's two cases. So you'll see actually case in this case if I make one minus x square plus log x uh, if I try to run this and it, it doesn't converge. So, there are two pathological cases which uh, I can tell you that if you have initial guesses are somewhere close to where the second derivative vanishes okay, and then you can have very small f prime and get into an error because remember our function our uh, method requires f by f minus f prime to be uh, to be found. right? So, that, that can give us a large error. Okay. So, that is one that one reason why you can get this when you when you will go here. Okay, so, we will see that just so that is that is formula which you are using. So, if f prime is very small okay, then also we can get a large error in this and we can diverge we can go to a very large value and then things can diverge that is one case where it can go it can go get into trouble and another case which we saw that it can get into a infinite 
uh, do loop okay. so that is another case. So, in this case for example, if you take this particular function 1 minus x square into log x and we will actually have trouble using Newton Raphson method, but other methods would work. Okay. So, another way to is and then another disadvantage of this program at uh, this program of having a use using Newton Raphson is that we need to compute f prime of x that is the derivative of x. Okay. So, when the derivative of x is not available okay, we will again have problem with this method because um, you know uh, see this function value might be returned by some other program and we do not know what the derivative is. Okay. So, in that case we may have to make uh, an, an approximation to derivative uh, by what is called a difference method okay, a difference approximation to a derivative. Okay. We will see more of this later when we look at differentiation and integration. So, here for the time being uh, let us take this formula which is known to most of us that the derivative we replace by what is called a backward difference uh, formula okay. that is we take the f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 divided by f of x i minus f of x i minus 1. So, now this formula is the backward difference method if uh, a difference formula if x i minus 1 is uh, some value which is less than x i okay, and then we would call this as a backward difference formula. But in this particular case in this iterative scheme x i and x i minus 1 are simply just two, two guesses two iteration uh, two guesses in the, uh, the i th and i minus 1 th iterative steps. But this is a formula which we can use. So, the, so the f of x i is the uh, one uh, value x i and x i minus 1 is another value. So, we make two guesses here for to start with we will guess x i and x i minus 1 and then we will find this function uh, this derivative f of f prime as f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 divided by x i minus x i x i minus 1 and we will use the Newton Raphson formula again as x i plus 1 as x i minus f by f prime. Okay. So, the idea is that we will not find f prime exactly like in a function okay, but we will simply replace that f prime by this particular formula f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 divided by x i minus x i minus 1 okay. where x to start with x i and x i minus 1 are our guesses. Okay. Now, what is the difference between this and uh, the false position method that uh, the false position method we made two guesses and we did something exactly like this. This is again going to be the line connecting x i f x i f of x i and x i plus 1 f of x i plus 1 line connecting these function this points x i f of x i x i plus minus 1 f of x i minus 1 and the li this this line where does it meet the x axis and that is a point going to be our new iteration point. Okay. So, that is in the false position we made two guesses that is uh, x 0 and x 1 and we said f of x 0 at the line connecting x 1 x 0 f of x 0. Uh, and x 1 f of x 1 where it meets x axis is the our new x value right. and this is exactly the same in that sense that we are again going to use two guess values okay, x 0 and x 1 let us say and we are going to draw a line connecting these two okay, and we are going to take the point at which that meets x axis as our new guess. Okay. So, but what is the difference between then this, this new method which we call the secant method and that uh, the false position method is that these two guesses x 0 and x 1 does not have to be on either side of the 0 it can be anywhere right. and hence uh, it also has a disadvantage that it may not converge. Okay. So, it can just get on to the same side of the 0 and it may not converge and that is what uh, the disadvantage of this is again we will go through the details here. Okay. So, it is similar to the bracketing method, but we do not bracket here. So, you know the last is, uh, advantage that we do not have to know where the 0 is. So, we do not have to worry about whether we are actually bracketing it. On the other hand it has a disadvantage that it may not converge while the bracketing methods are guaranteed to converge. So, here is the formula which you are going to use okay, in this particular case and that is being graphically shown here. Okay, so, you make some guesses x i minus 1 and x i. Okay, so, it does not have to be on either side of the 0. Okay, in this particular case it is but it does not have to be on either side of 0. So, we draw this line here okay, where it meets the x axis 
okay and now one more difference from the false position method is that this x i plus 1 now will replace x i and x i so now x i minus 1 now is go to x i and x i plus 1 will go to x i so x i will go to x i minus 1 x i plus 1 will go to x i okay so we will always replace the last one okay so that's in in the case of uh, false position we the new point if it is on the I means on the negative side that's below the x axis then we always replace f x0 with that okay but here there is nothing like this so the first these two points were taken right and then then these two points will be taken okay and then we found the new intersection point right and then we will take now these two points etc so we'll continue like that okay so now we'll draw a line like this and we'll go here okay and then we'll draw a line like this and we'll go like this etc okay in this case it will converge but in the false position method remember that we always replaced if the new iterative point that is the point at which this meets x axis if this is less than 0 or less than 0 that is the function value is less than 0 it replaced x0 if it is more than uh, 0 then it replaced x1 okay but here we don't do that we always replace the last point with the with the new one okay so irrespective of whether it is uh, less than 0 or greater than 0 we are going to say that the next line we are going to draw is between x i and x i plus 1 and the next line would be x between x i plus 1 and x i plus 2 etc. Okay, that is a method okay, and we will see an implementation of this and cases the pathological cases of both this and the Newton Raphson method where it does not work in the in the next lecture. Okay, and we will also do a, a more analysis of how what is the convergence rate of these three of this methods which we have looked at so far okay, between the bracketing methods and the Newton Raphson and the secant methods. We will see that in the next lecture.